Hey guys, it's Kat here, back with another tutorial on editing. This is After Effects. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do 3D effects. This time, I'm gonna be showing how to do basically everything you need to know to do the editing. These are more professional effects than like others that you will find on the internet. If you're a beginner to After Effects and you don't get any of this, I suggest you watch other tutorials that are easier and then come back to this one and you'll probably understand it better. The way we're gonna start doing an effect is we're gonna make a new layer, new solid. This is how you make a background or like just a solid the size of the screen. You can also change the like size of it and you can do that. You can pull up your files and get a pattern, which I'm gonna do right now. This is my folder of overlays. I just have a bunch of them. If you don't have any, I suggest you just download them from the internet because you can get a bunch of free overlays from just looking up on Google like what you're looking for or going to YouTube and searching free overlays because you will get thousands. I swear that you can get a lot. I sort mine in folders so I can just search up pattern, it'll come up. I'm gonna be using this background. This is how you make it so it's transparent or like has a blend mode. You could go to overlay and that will make it look like this. You could change the opacity here. I'm using After Effects CC 2015. So this is pretty much an old version. So I'm sorry if yours looks a lot different or a little different than mine. Keyframe it. I'm gonna be doing that. So we're just gonna add two keyframes. One here and one here. So maybe go from side to side. Now to do 3D effects, I'm going to be showing how to do a certain one effect because after you know how to do one effect that's 3D and you get the concept of 3D, you're probably going to be able to do any other kind of 3D effect that you want. So I'm going to be showing you how to do... First you're going to go to layer, you're going to make a new shape layer. Open it, you go to contents, you click add shape, I'm gonna add a rectangle, a fill. You can just make the size bigger by dragging it. Changing the color by going here and just changing it. Now to do 3D, this is probably where it gets confusing for people, I guess, I don't know. Go to layer, you make a new null object. Go here and select it, you just drag the swirly thing <laughs> and to the null. So then you set the layer to 3D, you set the shape layer to 3D because the null has to be what's moving it and then the shape layer is gonna be what it's moving so they both have to be 3D. We're just gonna keyframe it, X rotation, make another keyframe. The best way to do it would be to just make it negative 90 or 180 or 360, etc. One side would be more tilted down than the other if you didn't do it at like 90 or something. You can also move the position, which is what a big part of it is. You just add another keyframe, you keyframe it, and then you move it down. Then you'll be able to see more of a platform looking thing instead of like an invisible line, but like, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna add the animal. So you open up your file. So then you get your recording of your animal. You just drag it in. It has to be a green screen or it probably won't work for this effect. But you go to effects and presets and you just add key light. Key light is how to green screen, key light. And then this is how you pick the color for the green screen. And there you go. You just turn it up if the edges are like really fuzzy and weird. If you want to add an outline, just go to screen matte, hard color, change it to a color you want. I'm just gonna pick white cause I'm basic and I make everything white and pink and yeah. I don't know, I'm not very creative with my colors, but that's fine. So yeah, you can just make it as big as you want. Don't hook it up to the null yet. Make it 3D now, so then you see what's wrong with it. <laughs> and you go to transform, you could just adjust the like scale. If you want it to be in the middle of the square, don't change the third position yet. You can make it bigger and just move it up. This is how you move it upwards, like out of things. You want this to be how it comes out. You add it to the null when your playhead, this is the playhead, when your playhead is right here to where you want it to stay. Just add it to the null. You go back, it'll be on it like that. So then you have that. Now we can add text and rotate it. So you're just gonna go to the second keyframe. So everything's, posi everything's positioned right. You just add some text, literally just click on it. Um, hey, accidentally stopped the recording, but you just put the text on there 
like I did, you just click and type. You can position it by selecting it and then it'll let you position it like this. Since you're on the second keyframe, don't move this or it's gonna be out of position when you add it to the null. So you go to the second keyframe, um, you put it over the animal. Okay, so before you add it to the null, you're gonna make it a 3D layer so nothing messes up and then you're gonna change the position so it becomes in front. You can look at the views of like the perspectives. Custom view one is really helpful. You can see like where everything is. In a 3D perspective, this is how you make things in front of each other. The third number in 3D. It'll only show up on 3D layers, I'm pretty sure. And then you can just drag this to make it go up. When it's at the front of the square, you can then add it to the null. You can change the view back to active camera and it'll be like this. This is how it's gonna look. It's all gonna look 3D. Now you can go to this keyframe and we're gonna make it start rotating because you're gonna make text go on the other side. So now we're gonna add a keyframe to Z rotation. This is how you make it go around like, just like that. Y rotation would make it go upside down. So you just go to the last keyframe on X rotation. You add one with the stopwatch and then you go back to where you were or whatever and then you add another one and make it go around by just dragging the number after you keyframed it to go around go to the last keyframe now you can add more text you can just type more right here or you can duplicate the last one by Control d or command d if you're on mac unhook it from the null on 3d and it'll be back at the front then you make it 3d again you adjust it in custom view again i would usually just do this if i had an animation on the text that i didn't want to do again i just wanted it to be exactly the same but after that when you're at this screen you just move it forward again like i told you in position it's the third number you just drag it forward like that there you go now you can switch it back to active camera hook it up to no one again so there you go there is your 3d effect now it's time to smoothen the keyframes so to smoothen keyframes you just select all the keyframes you press f9 at the top of your keyboard and then you go back to graph editor you zoom in move this click here and then it gives you these like yellow lines i would just click here hold down shift drag this yellow dot closer to that click here and then it gives me the yellow dot for that and then i could hold down shift and move it like that so then it's like fast and then slow and then slow and then fast so it's more like smoother a lot of people think that looks smooth i don't know what it looks like to you it probably looks pretty bad because everything i do is not perfect i'm pretty sure anyone watching this tutorial could do whatever i did but do it better because i just never do anything right but yeah that's how i do 3d and then some suggestions i have are to add drop shadows so it doesn't look super flat i don't know how to describe flat it's just they look flat so to add drop shadows, there's an effect drop shadow. If you use a layer style to make a drop shadow, it might mess up the 3D. So I just use the effect. You turn up the distance, depending on how many pixels your text is, it'll be different. Opacity, not too much. If you're using bright colors, don't make the opacity too much. If you're using darker colors, the opacity can be higher, or you can make a full opacity shadow with like a color, but not full opacity in black. You can just literally copy and paste effects. You can command C if you're on Mac or control C if you're on Windows. So you just C and go back to the other text, control V and it'll paste the effect. You can also do the same onto the animal. Now they all have shadows. If you wanna add one to the square, then go ahead and do that. Like, I'm gonna just do that right now. So then after that, you can control A to select all the layers and just add motion blur to all of them and enable motion blur here by clicking this and turning it blue. And when it's blue, then that means there's motion blur. You can just wait for it to render and then watch it. You can adjust how much motion blur there is by going up here where it says render classic 3D and literally just shutter angle, turning it up so that there's more noticeable motion blur. Turn it up pretty high if you really want it to be noticeable. So yeah, like see, now you can see it. If you wanna watch it in full quality, just go to preview resolution full, but it'll take longer. That's why I didn't do it before. Thanks for watching guys. <laughs> that was really simple.